Hello guys, it's Susanna here. As you can see, I've got this beautiful arrangement of cute little um, mushrooms that I'm going to show you how I make. Um, I just got these beautiful um, yo-yos that I got from um, a lady and then I, they ended up being a lot bigger than what I thought. And this is my, like, my big... And I thought... Oh, they're really nice, and I thought, and I was looking at, um, you know, I've made, I've made um, mushrooms before, but I thought the bottoms of these and these particular colours, which I've picked out, um, they sort of remind me of what it looks like to have the bottom of a mushroom. Um, so I've just, I come up with a, you know, drew some ideas and, you know, did a bit of planning. I thought I've got to make up some first, and then. Um, then I'll go back and stitch. So what I've done, I had a whole heap of these empty spools um, and I've got a big, uh, you know, jar full of not so empty spools um, which you could use as well um, because they are probably a little bit heavier. Just trying to think. There we go. Yeah, oh, this one's, see that one could be used for one too because it's nearly empty, but um, yeah. And I've also used, I thought I'm going to use, just a, this is a normal Gudeman one. So um, I thought I'm going to use that. And I've got these little, oh, a I've got these. And they had these on the top of them. And I thought I didn't want to get rid of them. These are actual vintage. Oh, get one more. Yep, one more. There we go. Um, which I've just put in there. Um, and I thought some of them were missing their little tops. So I just thought these were like brand new vintage. What I managed to source in the op shop thanks to my husband. Great that he's a manager at a thrift shop. <laughs> get all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, so that, you know, that one was smaller, so I actually cut it up. Um, where are some of the others? Uh, I've got it on that one as well. It didn't, they didn't have any on there. Sometimes over time they come, they come off. So you can actually, um, there's another one. Here's another normal spool as well. A little bit smaller. Still a fairly vintage one. has got coats on there. So, um, yeah, so if you have some old spools where the things have seen better days like that seeing it's off to one side and they've seen a little bit better days you can um, get yourself um, stuff from a digi kit or you know lucky enough to have these on the on the old um, on these and it so happens that i'm actually using this thread because it's aw awesome thread it's crochet thread um to sew all these on and i love the look that it gives it gives you that sort of little rusticy look um so i'm going to proceed to show you i've also got I, um oh, here's my original and then i you know i scanned it um i've got a um P pdf which i've got on my um Etsy store because that's where my digitals go so um, not only can you make um, toadstool with it they're very sort of so I made the, the smaller one I wanted it to be a little bit smaller um, so it sort of looked a little bit more rounder uh, but with the tall ones oop, you can make I'm going to be making a Christmas tree as well so first I'll show you how I do the mushrooms because that's what this video is about so I'll, I might just let, this is the one I've actually finished and I put those on there because it's actually a pin cushion um, and I thought in the bottom here I've got the felt that matches that so I'm trying to match up the colors on here because they were empty um, that you could probably you know put your pins in there or you know your needles in there and then your pins in there and then if you have all similar color pins like that it acts like the little dots on the mushrooms so um, just these are the ones I've just pinned in 
um, the extra little bits so I thought a little button on there might be nice but they just look so good I just think I've got these big yo-yos so we'll leave leave that little guy there and then I've got this one which I've got this beautiful little ruffle and I thought I'm going to make that um, into the ruffles on the pink one so these are pretty much all the colors that I've got I'll just put those other two down here and I've only just finished um, stitching this one in that color so um, I thought I'm just making enough uh, of these to finish up using my spool so I've I've done all done all these ahead of time so what you do with um, the spools and I've also got this Wait a minute, I'm going all over the place I found this and I thought that is absolutely perfect because it's a, a little wood no, only like two dollars it took a bit to get that top bit off mind you and then I've got this beautiful moss that I got in spotlight you can get in the garden area there which I put on the top um, and I thought I've got it ready I want to put this one the little one on there because I mean how cute is that and it's nice and sturdy whereas these ones yeah, they can fall a little bit so I think that one will be nice and sturdy and make a really good pin cushion so that's the, the small one for that so I thought I'd just give it a whirl to see what it's like and I really liked it so I've got my selections of like this this one is felt and all the rest are like felted like wool um, you know fabric that I've got so it's still felted wool but um, yeah so now let me see I've got all my little bits and pieces here and there put that back in there here's my little templates cut out these are my originals okay here it is that's what I was after so um, yeah and I'm like when I showed my son he goes oh they look like trees this is before I finished making it and I'm like they probably could double as Christmas trees so I might use some of these more because I particularly do love that and I think that would look really nice with that and have like a shabby chic Christmas tree so um, the possibilities are endless so as you can see I've got a big mess here now I'm going to push those over because I need this for my bit of glue I bought these um, luckily enough like it was I went into my two dollar shop and like you know a yeah, dollar dollar tree or whatever you know those little cheapy shops and it actually had some craft dowel so 148 by 5 millimeter um, so yeah good size I mean I if you ca if you can't find that I find a pencil fits really really well like if you can get yourself an old pencil if you're only going to be making one you know you'll probably just get some old pencils um, but see this is really big and so I've had to come up with a solution um, to try and fix you know remedy that now, which one do I want on the top I think I might I like that oh this might be a nice one for Christmas tree so what I do and you get glue everywhere it's horrible <laughs> hopefully you guys can see this without knocking over any trees I'll just put that underneath now I just glue a little bit here this is why I get glue everywhere because I you know do this my thing I'll put that on there like that and I just sort of thicken up that bottom part so that it'll stay she says well it doesn't stay um, in there because it's just wondering if that's a good size yeah that's pretty good so you just wrap a bit of fabric around it you're thicking it up thicken it up and then put 
put some more glue here. It doesn't matter if it goes through because we are wanting it to go through. And I'm going to put glue all over that. Trying to just keep the glue to one part of me, but I managed to get it on the other finger as well. Okay. But you don't need to do this with your finger. Hopefully you saw that. So now I'm going to just squeeze it into there. Really does need to go down. Come on, stay down. Even if we just twist it. No, I think I'm going to need to let it dry. I need to let this dry a little bit so that it doesn't move. Okay, well, we'll put that aside. I made all of these yesterday, and you get all these steps that you have to try and remember. Okay. Ugh. One thing about this glue, when it sort of dries a little bit, you can roll it off. Excuse me while I get the glue off my finger. Now, so while that's sort of drying a little bit, you do create a mess. Quite the mess. Okay, bring that back down. Hopefully we're in camera. I'll just maybe dry that off a little bit. So I've got all my my um, quite a few of these little stem parts which I just did a whole heap in one go and initially it was circled but then I thought no I need to have them straight so I've got a couple of um, bits that I need to like sew and put together so I'm going to show you through all the steps oh, really annoys me when I've got this stuff on me now what you do the reason i've kept this one aside hopefully you guys can see this when you cut them around the round part you cut um like you know a little bit around it about a quarter of an inch something like that because when you sew you sew on the line now when you get to this, you actually cut on the line. This is why I, um, the little round bit on the bottom on all of them, and I'll, you'll know why I do that in a minute. Okay. And then we just put these, and because we just put these together, and just make sure that the round bits um, hook up. So yeah, it's not always perfect where that sits. Where are we? Big long needle. Put that in there and sew. Um, I start here, work along there, and you've got to leave a gap because this is how we turn it inside out. So you stop there, leave the knit, you know, like don't worry about cutting it. Go back and forth there, go back and forth there, and then cut the um, um, continue sewing. Hopefully you can see that there sewn all the way around stop back and forth and the reason why you do need to do that is because that's where I'm going to be turning it inside out so um, okay so I will so when you are um, tracing these so you cut two I've got cut two written on these are my originals um, I just do one one way and one the other you know that finds they remind me of those whale tails <laughs> um, I didn't realize that after I had done it let's see if this is dry enough no definitely need to make it drier so okay move these so what we're going to do is I get my thread just a nice strong thread like that, which I've already pre got on there, and then we pick ourselves a, a rather cute, a 
I only got one of these. I'll not do that one. It doesn't matter. See how they're all really raggedy and they've been. You know, some of these are pretty bad because they're very, very vintage. So what we do is we open that up because that's the. This is the outside, and we put that on there like this. And it doesn't feel like it, it will fit. Try and, but it does. Okay, then we find these little pins tend to work a little better because they don't get in the way as much. Okay, these are just so cute. They're a bit wonky, like this was really um, wonky and all over the place so I gave it a bit of an iron so I'll just leave that there and I'm probably going to I'll go back I'll start here okay I mean probably the worst possible one to choose but at least I'm using it up see they're all got marks and they're you know but they're a good size so what we do and I really like this, when I was first like making up my the first ones, I'm like, oh, I don't know how that's going to go. This is really simple. Just stitch in here. Because remember, this is the inside. And just... When you get to those corner bits, I'll just go either way. Either side of it. And all we're doing... Is this little stitch make sure that you pull it tight and grab grab a bit of it and I don't mind because you see these little stitches and I like it is it a real rustic look so you see because this some of this is broken a little bit so you will need to um, go in a little bit and that's this is why I've used felt because felt doesn't fray or you know felt or wool felted wool felted wool is more you know the, the patterned ones but um because and most of the time these are uh, have got you know the edges are sewn in and so they're pretty good this one just happens to be a real shabby one but I thought I'll use it up. I've only got the one and I think they would look nice on. And as you can see, not doing it perfectly. Gives it that real rusticy look. And on the bits that are a bit, see how that's a bit more fray? Might you go down just that little, might go back, catch it a bit better. Go down that little bit more. And what I like about it, I love the way that it comes up. And you can actually see, you can see the yo-yo, which is what I really like about it. Oh, looks like I must have tripped as well. just going to I might turn off the camera and finish sewing this so that we can you know get to the next bits and this video doesn't take forever I'll just pause it okay I'm back again I'll show you that in a minute but this has gotten wetter it's still got a lot, enough of the glue on there that'll glue and we need to twist it until it gets into that part Where's there it is, a little pokey tool, poke that down. So that's how you get the dowel in and if the dowel is too big, 
wet it and make sure that it's sitting flat so that it will sit without it yep that's good without it wobbling all over the place okay now this is where leaving that little hole comes in handy now i don't know how i'm gonna go most of the time i'm like i don't know how it works it nah, might be a little bit shabby there but it's okay because it's double layered so we're just gonna turn it inside out Yep, which isn't always easy sometimes. It's a bit easier on the on the um, on the bigger one. Once you get momentum going, it's not so bad. Okay. Ugh. There we go. Now, see how we went, and I, you know, I think oh, it's not going to be half sewn, but it has. See, you think that it's not going to work, and even in bits where you, I love that you can actually see the stitching, I think that looks really good. So, what we proceed to do, and can see it's got the two layers, so as in, you know, you got that extra layer on the other side, so. It, it always seems to work out. So what we're going to do now, where's my stuffy? And like with always, you tend to put more in than you think. So um, that's why I thought I'll show you how to, to do it on the little one. But, um, and because it is, um, felting especially this is not as bad the wool felting but when you get normal felt um, you can stretch it so be careful um, if you're going to be using it as a pin cushion you might want to do it really tight if you're just going to just have them sitting as ornaments which you probably will do with the Christmas tree or even the, the mushrooms I just think they're so cute that would be um, really nice this one's got a little bug on it. <laughs> See, it's like a real mushroom. Um, they would be really nice to have as maybe some winter or autumn, you know, decor. When you, if you know, if you're these type of people that like to decorate your house seasonally, which tends to be a very American, American thing. They like to. Do their things seasonally. Okay. So I tuck it in. So cute. So this is a nice, um, quick mushroom. The one I did. Um, a few years ago was a little bit harder and more challenging than big. They're still sitting in my little window over to my this side. <laughs> um, they look really cute. But these are definitely a little easier to make. And I've, you know, you can go crazy with them and the fact that you can make little Christmas trees out of them as well. Um, yeah, you know, it's a it's a handy pattern. So, okay, and you can make them whatever colour you like, you know, you have a shabby chic one, which I really like that. Um, and this, I just use old bits of lace. Um, this one, um, the big one, I think, that, this one here, I probably use, um, you know, from a doily, lace doily. See how much you actually shove in these things? You can get quite a bit. Okay. So cute. Okay. You tend to do the top and the bottom and then towards the end you get that middle part. I'm doing it fairly quickly. 
you find if you want it to sit nicely you don't put massive bits in um, like you know like that this one sort of looks a bit like an avocado <laughs> so I've got all different sorts of colors my little wool stash and everyone's probably got a, I've got a bag full of um, felt my bag is so old it's still got my um, initials I made it when I was in high school I'll show you it's got my <laughs> SV it's, this is my felt bag um, from when I was, you know, that's my maiden name, and I've been married 34 years this year. So, it's been one of those ones that, you know, when I get more felt, and I inherited some felt from my mum. She used to make these little felt pictures, which I've got one of, which is nice. Now, what we do here is you get a strong thread, which I always use when I do that, is um, the original threads. And they're always, you know, they're really strong, but they're thin. Okay, and you need a th thin, strong thread for this. So we're just going to do a ladder stitch. Okay, I tend to do about three. And then go pull. It's a great little stitch. Still amazes me how awesome this stitch is. I remember when the, the very first time, this is why you need to be strong because when you pull it, I've had in previous times pull, snap, start again. So you need a nice and thin but strong thread. Okay. A bit more of a pull and to finish off make sure it's been pulled in I just do a couple of a couple of these and then on the last one I go out there and cut it off now always re -knot it that way now when it comes time to use it again so once it's been sewn up you know maybe push it back into shape again now what we do um, I'm going to use this one on here which is a little bit thinner so um, you go into the middle and you sort of like give it a bit of a snip and you get yourself I've got one of these multi-tools, it's one of those awls and you push in, you're going to give it a good push because you've got to get into, you've got to get into that and then you know for example this is what I use and then it goes in there so if it's not in far enough you can use a screwdriver there you go. and then where are we well this one needs doing so what I'll do um, that's going to go onto there so it's got to be done a little bit different so um, cute 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 how cute is that it looks really mushroomy so um, I might even wrap around some some of this on there you know like to and make it a little bit fatter just so it can sit in there okay but actually it's sitting not too bad oh cute I just love that so that one's going to go for there but for this what we need to do is we've got all these strips I just got a piece out that about that long and I, I just sewed nine of these and it's open either end and this is um, 
what, what did I use this for? This was my um, pink avocado dyed or I dyed it. Um, not always easy doing this, I can tell you. Doing stuff inside out. Just got to grab, grab a little bit. Actually, I might use one of the, the dowels. Might grip a little better. Try to grip. Oop, come on. That's the only downside of the fact I might push it in a little bit. That it's not hasn't been sewn on one end. You could probably almost sew on the bottom for one of them and then um, cut it off because it would make it easier if the bottom was sewn give you something to grip hold of excuse me Urgh. yeah when you I remember when you're making dolls and you had to once you've gripped it there we go see it's gripped um, it's easier <laughs> she says as it doesn't work Urgh, come on yeah, Mum. <sighs> you can feel my pain, can't you? See, I'm showing you as it is. Frustrations and all. Okay. Ah. Was going so well too. You can fast forward this bit if you like. No one likes to watch someone struggle. <laughs> oh my goodness! Here we go. Oh, here we go. Once that little bit comes out, yay! Not hard at all. Now, so what we're we doing. Go down a little bit. Um, what we're doing, where is it? Here it is. Is now I've got this one. Oh. So, what we do is you just put it over the top like that, and it'll go, it'll go down a little bit. Just put a little bit of glue on the bottom so that it'll hold on to itself. Okay. Let me push that down. And with some of the others, I actually gave it a little bit of a twist. I think I like that look. Twist it round. That's why you need a bit of glue on the bottom so it holds that you can twist it. Okay, now. This one I've pre-done. So what we do with this, we get a heap of glue. But we, once again, with your fingers, you don't need to use your fingers, but I find that helps it stay into place. Let it twist. I'm gonna hold that down. Then put that in there. And excuse me, I'm just bringing it towards myself, but I am pushing it and getting the all and pushing that little part in there so you just got to push it in because my fingers are all sticky yeah. try and push it down as far as you can go give it a bit of a twist there we go okay. 
Now, because it's on here, it is the lower down you can get it, the better center of gravity you will get. If you know what I mean here. Yeah, there we go. Test it, make sure that it's standing upright. Okay, get that. Now, what I usually do with these is I get the matching thread. Excuse my finger because it's got glue all over it. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, guys, So, because um, I thought I wanted to show you from start to finish. I will do another one. I'll be like back again where I show you how I do a Christmas tree. So basically doing the same thing. I'll have it ready up until this point and then I'll show you how I decorate it. So um, ooh, that's almost perfect. Okay. Um, I might wrap it around a couple of times because it's needs to be a little thicker yeah I might use all that so let's do move that out of the way push this up and I get a bit of the glue I make sure that it's nicely glued on one end if you don't like the idea of glue you can twist this around and sew it, um, which is, is possible. Okay, let that hold. And then come back. Normally I just wrap it around so it's wrapped around twice, but it's a bit thin so it needs to thicken out a little bit and adds a little bit of weight to the bottom um, that's why it probably isn't a bad idea that you use like that's heavier because it's got thread on it so if you use one that's already got thread on there you don't have to go looking for empty spools I just had a whole heap of empty spools and it's a good way to use up your empty spools so just that'll stitch down and on oh, what did I do on this I don't know if you can see it because it's in the green I stitched a couple of crosses on there so just to make it look pretty so that's the basicness of it then I've got um, this I'll do with my glue stick some bits of fabric and I'm gonna okay, pick the end that you want to see at the front. Yeah, I like that one. Put that down. Complementary colour. Okay, put that down. Then you just get a colour that works with it, and you just do little straight stitches all the way around. And then in the the one that's on the top, which is usually the complementary felt bit, um, on this one, these are opposites because they're both pink. I just did put the, the darker pink on that one and that, and then got this really pretty fabric for that. So um, that's holding it down. And then this one, I think, would look rather cute with white white little um, things on it like the other one had the red but I think this would look cute with white there you go how cute is that and then I'll just hold that down with the pin there we go and then I'll proceed to sew that and on this one this is the bit I knew, I knew there was something, another step so what you do I might get half of that because I don't think a full piece of that and it'll allow me to use it for another, another 
another piece. Um, I'll use this one. I'll get this thread again, the one that I used to um, sew it in. And just do a knot. That's the inside, I think. And do a running stitch. These actually are quite great for doing a running stitch because there's already the holes. How awesome is that? If you don't have the holes, running stitch is pretty easy. That way it'll pull together really nicely. Sure we've all got little bits of lace sitting around somewhere. I've just used um, I think on this one I used you know gathered this up and chucked it around so you can just use pretty much anything. So and I don't I don't um, glue this I just stitch on because this part there is made from this is fabric and it hasn't been glued on just on the top and bottom so that's not where you're going to be sewing so you pull this pull it around now put it around there go like this you can either have it up at the top or halfway in the middle I quite like having it in the middle because you you want to see it and make sure that the um, stitching and stuff is maybe at the back and then you just do a couple of stitches that's gonna give it a pull there okay. There we go. And I've caught hold of the uh, the actual thing too, so sometimes it doesn't quite sit the way that you want it to sit. So you know you bring it up, and there's a little the gathering, the gathering stitch. Might leave that in there because I might fiddle around with it. And there we go. So, oh yeah, 43 minutes. Here's our little family. <laughs> so cute. I love this one. How gorgeous is that? So I do like that idea. That way you've already got the base and everything already done. And that's, I just glued that down with craft glue. Um, if you don't, don't have moss, um... I'll show you. Thank you. Got all these little bits and pieces of wool that you know you could like stuff like that. That would be really good to put down there as well. So you use what you've got rather than going out and buying something. But I was lucky enough to find these, and I was going to get more, and I wish I had it, um, but they're only two dollars. Um, I've seen him in there for the years now and I thought oh it'd be nice to make something but because of this pole bit but it actually works and work utilizes very well okay guys well thank you very much I hope you in, enjoyed creating these and I'll be back in the next video to show you how I decorate the Christmas trees so you get two lots of um, you know good value for money two lots of ideas with the one template so they're only two dollars on my etsy store so you know um yeah that's the pattern and here's the tutorial okay guys thanks for watching and go out and create your beautiful um shroomy family they're so cute i just love them so um yeah thanks for watching guys bye